we were pure, uh, totally independent of the field ambulance, although we came under their overall um, administrative um, setup, we were totally independent. Um, there was a, an Indian field ambulance fairly close to us, and uh, at one st stage we were actually attached to them. Normal medical procedures, they would have their, um, actually with the regiment, they would have their ordinary first aiders, for want of a better word, yeah. their medical men. Um, they would have a casualty clearing station. Oh, first of all, they'd have a regimental aid post where a casualty would, once he'd been brought in by a medic from the field, put into the regimental aid post, move him forward to a casualty clearing station, and they would either send them to one of the mobile army surgical hospitals or fly them out to Japan, depends on the state of the injuries. So that was the, the medical setup. The um, army health setup was just our unit, and we were responsible for the whole of the Commonwealth Division. So um, I had to give advice to the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, the Royal Australian Regiment, uh, the Welsh Regiment. In fact, that's probably a, we believe I might have met John Bowler while we were there because we were called upon uh, for advice about the smell of bodies in the minefields. And um, we think that's that John and I, uh, may have met each other, but haven't didn't know each other intimately, as it were. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, it was interesting to see how the uh, various regiments um, operated up the front. Uh, remember going to the Third Royal Army, uh, Royal Australian Regiment, and to be invited on the top of a hill probably overlooking the, the Chinese, to have a, a beer with them when they had a crate of beer and all sitting up there. You know, they're totally indisciplined, it seemed, but obviously a great fighting force.